In this video, I'm going to show that the expectation values are constant for stationary states. This video is part two of a mini series on stationary states. You can find some links in the description below. First of all, let's do a quick recap of what we concluded in part one. In part one of this mini series on stationary states, we took functions of this form. These are separable solutions to the Schrodinger equation. These are wave functions that can be broken down into two uh, functions. One function, little psi of x, that exclusively depends on x, and an exponential factor uh, that incorporates the time dependence. And this is what that little exponential factor looks like. So what we found is that if you take the probability density function, uh, which is the magnitude of the wave function squared, that's actually equivalent to little psi of x, the magnitude of that, squared. So these guys are equivalent uh, because the exponential factor over here actually cancels out. When you take the complex conjugate uh, and use exponential laws, these guys cancel out. And we're going to do something uh, very similar to that using expectation values. So we're going to use that property of exponential laws and uh, this complex conjugate, and that's going to give us uh, a way to cancel out the time dependence. And so the time dependence will disappear, and we're going to show that the expectation values are actually constant. There's no dependence on time. So let's go ahead and define the expectation value of a quantity. So let's say Q is some quantity, uh, and this over here denotes the expectation value of Q. And we can define the expectation value with an integral sandwich. So we've talked about this in previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. Uh, you can just sandwich an operator that represents an observable uh, in between psi star and psi, and then integrate over the entire domain, and that's going to give you the expectation value. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star. So this is a capital psi. And then we're going to put the operator uh, in the middle. And q hat is the operator that represents the observable q. And we're taking the expectation value of that. So let's finish off with psi. And we're integrating with respect to x. So the integral are kind of like the bread of the sandwich. Psi star and psi are the lettuce. And all the tomatoes and cheese, that is this operator in the middle. So we've created an operator sandwich. And that represents our expectation value. So let's rewrite this uh, with the form that we have up here. And that's going to look like this integral. We're going to have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of little psi star. We're going to complex conjugate it first. Uh, then we're going to complex conjugate this exponential. Just like in the previous video, we're going to turn that minus psi into a plus psi. We're going to have et over h bar. Then we're going to have the operator in the middle. This is the operator q. And we're going to have uh, just normal psi without the complex conjugate. And that's going to look like this. Now, there's an important point I need to stress on over here. So we've got the integral, right? This thing on the left over here, that is capital psi star. This thing on the right, that is capital psi. So this is complex conjugated. This is not complex conjugated. Here's the important point. This is a very subtle nuance. If we want to move this exponential factor over here, so we can join this exponential factor, if we want to swap the order of these guys, this guy cannot have any time derivatives in it. So it can only have uh, functions of x and derivatives with respect to x. If there's any time derivatives in here, then we're going to run into trouble. Because those time derivatives are going to operate on this over here. Time derivatives, they're going to ignore this little psi. The little psi just depends on x. But if there are time derivatives, then this t is going to get uh, differentiated with respect to. So operators of that form are going to cause us problems. And their expectation values will depend on time. But luckily for us, all of the operators that we're dealing with depend on x and p. So all of the operators can be written in terms of position and momentum. This is analogous to Newtonian mechanics. In Newtonian mechanics, or classical mechanics in general, you can take any uh, quantity that you're measuring and write it in terms of position and momentum. Right? Any of those useful quantities. Uh, if you think of position, velocity, acceleration, those are just derivatives 
of position, right? Uh, if you think of uh, momentum, momentum is just momentum. If you think of kinetic energy, you can write kinetic energy in terms of momentum. And the total energy, or the Hamiltonian, you can write that as position and momentum. It's a function of position and momentum. So all of the functions that we're used to from Newtonian mechanics can be written in terms of position and momentum. Luckily for us, in quantum mechanics, a very similar thing holds. So all of these Qs are actually going to depend on some combination of x hat and p hat. x hat, what is x hat equivalent to? Well, x hat is simply multiplying by x, right? So that's not going to affect uh, anything over here, right? So we will be able to swap this if, if we just have x hat. But what about p hat? p hat is the same as minus i h bar times a partial derivative with respect to x. So we're differentiating with respect to x. So that is going to affect this guy. It's going to affect all psi, but it will have no effect over here because there's no x in this exponential factor. So that means if, if q is only composed of x and p, we can swap the order of this guy. So this guy, we can move him over here. We might not be able to swap the order of these two over here because this guy uh, might actually be a derivative operator and we might have to differentiate little psi first. So that might not hold. But we don't actually have to swap the order of these two. All we have to do is swap the order of these two and then we can use the same trick that we used in part one and we can combine uh, both of these exponentials using exponential laws. So we can take this plus i e t over h bar we can combine it because they're being multiplied together, and we can have a minus i e t over h bar, and these guys are going to cancel, and that's going to give us e to the zero, which is just one. So this is how we get rid of the time dependence. So when we move this over here, and we're allowed to do that because of this subtle nuance, we move that over here and combine it, that time dependence disappears. And what are we left with? We're just left with this expression with the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of little psi star sandwiching this uh, little operator of q, and there's another letter little psi on this side, and then we're going to integrate with respect to x. And this over here, this definition of q for stationary states with no time dependence is what we're going to be using in the next few videos of this mini-series on stationary states. So this I'm going to actually uh, just start off talking about this in the next few videos, and we're not going to go through all of this trouble again and uh, derive it. So as a quick summary, what did we find out? If you have uh, a wave function of this form, if it is separable, then it is a stationary state. And if you take the uh, expectation value of a quantity uh, in this separable state, what you're going to find is that the time dependence is going to disappear because those exponential factors are going to combine together and they're just going to uh, be equivalent to multiplying by 1 or by the identity. And that doesn't actually do anything. So the entire uh, dependence on time completely disappears from the definition of the expectation value. This is only true uh, for equations of this form. If you had some kind of uh, linear uh, combination of these guys and the exponential factors had different values of e, they wouldn't cancel. Right? So you'd have some kind of oscillatory behavior. So this is very special uh, for these guys. So that's why stationary states are very, very special types of wave functions. And they can be used to construct any other type of wave function. So the most important takeaway message from this video is what's inside this box. We're going to use that for the Hamiltonian operator in part three. Make sure you watch all of the videos in the quantum mechanics playlist by clicking over here.